Hi everyone, Mr. Markwick here. Today's video is a bit of an introduction into borrowing. Um, so today we're gonna be looking at paying off a loan um, with a very basic example. Um, for my current year 12s, our topic at the moment is financial models or fin financial modeling. It's broken up into two parts. We've got investing um, and we've also got borrowing. Um, so today we're gonna be looking at or beginning to look at borrowing with a simple example. Um, there are some differences in terms of how we work out um, you know, some of the things in borrowing um, as opposed to um, how we use the graphics calculator to calculate investing, but I'll point those out as we go. First thing I sort of want to draw your attention to is this part here that um, the interest reduces as the loan is repaid, so the principal on which the interest is calculated is reducing. So let's explain that using an example here. So let's see, suppose we would take out a loan of $1,000 over 12 months at 12% per annum, interest compounded monthly. He agrees to repay the loan in equal monthly installments. So using graphics calculator, you can actually work out that uh, Wilbur will need to pay or repay $88.85 per month. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, just note, when you are um, repairing, we, we, we round up to the nearest cent, okay? Um, we won't round to the nearest cent, we round up. To the nearest cent or the next cent we should say um, because you want to make sure that as you repay you um, pay off the full amount and there's nothing left in that account um, at the end um, of the loan of the loan term um, or the loan's life i should say so um, based on that example we just quickly looked at at the start of the first month um, because we were borrow borrowed a thousand dollars he owes a thousand dollars plus he owes um 12 percent um, interest per month compounded monthly, which works out to be $10 for the first month. He repays $88.85 at the end of the first month. So the balance at the end of the first month is $1,000 plus $10 minus the amount he repays, which works out to be $921.15. Now, at the start of the second month, that is the amount in the account, and that is the amount that interest gets charged on. Okay, so notice that the amount charged in the second month is less than the amount charged in the first month. And as the months go on, the amount of interest is reducing, okay? Um, so that's an important thing to remember when we're, we're borrowing. As the life of the loan progresses, the amount of interest you pay reduces. Um, it's kind of different to investing that um, you know, as you in, invest um, or as your money um, earns interest, you are earning interest on that interest in you know, the next month or the next, um, whatever it is, compound period. So um, that's one difference. One thing I also want to point out here is that, um, let's say at the end of six months, which is sort of here, he um, he has $514.91 um, still remaining to pay. Now that's, it's, you may think, oh, well, at six months, he should be halfway through, right? Well, he's almost halfway through, not quite. One thing to keep in mind here as well is that um, in the first part of the um, of the loan, he's he's paying more interest. Okay, so he hasn't quite paid off half yet. Yeah, whereas in the second part of the loan, or towards the end of the loan, he's paying less. Okay, so that's why at the halfway point of the loan's life, you haven't quite paid off half of the loan yet. Okay, now let's get into an example. Um, and I'll point out a few of those um, differences between investing and borrowing when you're using the graphics calculator. So this example says Ryan takes out $10,000 um, to be repaid over three years at 9.6% per annum um, compounded monthly. Calculate the, pay the re monthly repayment. So here it's asking us to calculate PMT on our graphics calculator. So before we do that, the number of periods for this loan will be three times 12 because it's three years compounded monthly. The interest rate that we're putting into the calculator here is 9.6%. And you'll notice that when you're borrowing, um, that percentage is going to be higher than when you're investing. The present value here is going to be 10,000. Now, I want to point out here that this 10,000 is going to be a positive amount that we put onto our calculator. Um, when you, you know, put a, an amount into an account to invest, it's negative because you're putting it in, you're paying it. But because we're receiving this money, we're getting this money, it's now a positive value, okay? Even though we still owe 10,000, because this, this present value comes to us, um, it's a positive value that we're putting into our calculator. PMT is what we're actually asking the calculator to determine for us. So let's just leave that blank 
um, when we enter that into the calculator. The future value, we want to be zero. We want to repay everything um, and wipe, wipe the slate clean. So we want the future value to be equal to zero. And P, Y payments per year and compound periods per year here are both going to be 12 because the interest is compounded monthly. Okay, hence P, Y and C, Y both being 12. So put that information in the calculator and ask it to solve PMT for us. So to do that, you can open up your graphics calculator and just put in those values for N, um, interest rate of 9.6, present value of 10,000. And that's pretty much it. PY and CY are already set to, to 12. So ask calculator to determine the PMT for me here by pressing F4. It says that we need to pay back $320.79.7. But remember, we're gonna round that up. We're gonna round it up to the next cent. So $320.80 is how much needs to be paid per month. So, um, PMT in this case is $320.80. Okay, like I said, important to round that amount up. If there's a discrepancy between um, you know, your answer and the answer you, you, know, you might see in the back of the book or something, that could possibly be why. Okay, so make sure you round it up to the nearest cent. Now, the next part of the question here asks us, hence calculate the total interest charged on the loan. Now, there are two ways of, uh, there's a few ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you two ways in this video. Um, the, probably the, the most conventional way to do this is to go, well, all right, if I'm paying back $320.80, 36 times, how much am I actually paying? So let's work that out. So for part B, I'm paying back $320.80, 36 times. What is that equal to? Okay, so let's head into the run function here of our calculator and do uh, $320.80 times by 36, 36 months, it works out to $11,548.80. Now remember, we only borrowed $10,000. So the difference between the 10,000 and what you see on your screen there, the 11,548.80 is how much interest you're paying, all right? So I would do that amount, subtract the initial principal that I borrowed, 10,000, which would give me, um, if I just do, Subtract 10,000, you don't need to do that, but I'll do it for the sake of this video, $1,548.80. $1,500, sorry, let me just double check that, and 48 and 80 cents. Now that's the most conventional way to do it, but there's another way of doing it as well. So if I go back into my graphics calculator and into the um, financial, um, section. So within here, um, I've already inputted all that stuff into the um, the compound interest section. Now that stuff's saved in there. So if I just go back one screen by pressing exit and head into the amortization function, F4, um, I can ask how much, what's the total amount of interest I'm paying um, from PM1 to PM2, PM1 and PM2 being certain terms within the life of that um, that loan. So I'm looking for the total interest charge. So from the first month inclusive up until an inclusive of the 36th month, what is the total sum of all the interest in that time? And notice there um, that it's very similar to the answer I have here. Now the difference is because if I go back, I haven't changed that PMT value. But if I change that PMT value to um, the answer I've got here, $320.80, it should be closer to that amount. So minus $320.80, okay, then ask it, what is the total sum of all the interest based on that? Um, it's a lot closer to that answer, okay? There is a little bit of um, a discrepancy there, uh, okay? Um, but if you, I guess, sh show it that, um, you, you know, your, the, your, your method you're using. So I might say within the amortization function, I've looked at the sum of all the interest is equal to $1,548. And I think it worked out to uh, 70, 
cents there, sorry, um, and 68 cents, okay, which is, which is fine. Okay, now, um, yeah, either one of those, uh, either one of those answers will be fine, either, either one of those methods is fine. I like using the amortization function because it's, it's a bit of a shortcut. It sort of takes a little bit less time. You don't have to go all the way out. But yeah, that first process I showed you is probably the, the more conventional path to take. The last question there says, what is the outstanding balance after one year of repayments? Again, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to show you both of them. Um, probably the, again, the most conventional way um, is through the compound interest section. So... Um, I'm just going to exit the amortization function here, go back into F2, and uh, it says, what is the outstanding balance after one year of repayment? So let's just look at one year of repayment. Okay, so N then becomes 12 months, one times 12. Okay, and my interest rate stays at 9.6. My present value, I'm still borrowing $10,000. PMT still remains at $320.80. But what I want to know is what is my future value going to be? So what is what is going to be in the account after 12 months? Because I'm not going to be able to pay that whole amount back in 12 months. I know it takes me 36 months based on all this. What will still be left in there after 12 months? So ask it, what is the future value? Press F5 and it will tell me that there is still $6,979 and round it up uh, to 81 cents. So 6979, and what do we say, 80, 80 cents, 81 cents. Ah, so um, that's one way of doing it through, and like I said, that's probably the most conventional way of doing it through the compound interest section, just changing that, um, and it's the value of N. 12 and asking it to determine the future value. So let's put that, um, let's, and now let's, the second way of doing it, if I go back into that, we can make those changes, the amortization function, that's the second um, method I'm gonna show you. Say, so, all right, now I'm just looking for, um, you know, from the first month, so from PM1 being one, up until PM2 being the 12th month, end of the, end of the 12th month, so inclusive of that 12th month. Okay, what is, current balance of that um, loan okay there we go again it will give me the same value six thousand nine hundred seventy nine dollars um, and 81 cents okay so that's the um, the other way of doing it so again I like using the amortization function um, it's good to get your head around I guess the trick with this one is just make sure that you understand PM1 and PM2 are uh, based around um, the compounding periods so in this case, because we're being compounded monthly, PM1 and PM2 represent the um, the, the month within that uh, loan life. If it was weekly, PM1 and PM2 would represent the, the, the week um, or the, the number of weeks within that loan period, et cetera, okay? Um, and it is inclusive of those months or weeks or those compounding periods, okay? So that's one thing to really be... Um, careful with too. Anyway, like I said, that's a basic introduction to um, borrowing money and paying it off and working out how much interest um, and how much you have to pay per per term. I guess an assumption here, if, if we're talking about assumptions, is we're assuming that, you know, this you know, 9.6% um, interest rate remains that 9.6% um, for the entire three years. And generally, like with smaller loans um, over smaller uh, time periods, like for example, three years or even five years, they do remain fixed. Um, but yeah, so some variable rates, um, which we'll look at in the future and some future videos, um, do will obviously impact if, if the rate changes um, after a certain number of years. But that'll be for a later date. Um, hopefully, that's a nice, easy introduction into borrowing for you. Um, and yeah, again, hopefully it helps.